this stage we have Mayurish Joshi who's a fund manager at Angel Broking joining us. Mayurish, uh, wonderful to have you right here on the show as well. Uh, just wanted to uh, get a sense uh, as to how you're looking at the markets at this stage. We also of course saw uh, the numbers that were coming out uh, of Ashok Leyland. Uh, how are you sort of looking at uh, the overall picture at this stage? Afternoon, Fatima. I think the pleasure is all mine to be on your show. So largely again markets expected to uh, probably be consolidating in a very tight range uh, and largely again I think the earnings have been uh, a tad bit better than what the street was expecting uh, and to a large extent as well the second half earnings recovery is something that the street will be pegging on uh, going forward as well. Uh, so yes I think consolidation is how I see the markets uh, at this juncture. Uh, fairly valued to be really honest from an FI18 perspective. Uh, when it comes to Ashok Leyland's numbers, uh, a tad bit disappointing, uh, but there can be two facets to the whole uh, uh, result reporting. Uh, a, I think realizations might have seen a little bit of a drop uh, at the same time, raw material cost increases might have just eaten into the margin, so the margin disappointment might be on that count uh, and largely that is what translate and transpires onto the bottom line. Uh, so what really comes through in terms of their outlook, uh, both in terms of CV and uh, the LCB demand in particular, I think that those are important aspects to be looked out for. Uh, secondly, again, in terms of uh, their capex requirements uh, and what happens in terms of the aftermarket share uh, along with the performance of the foundries. Uh, so a tad bit disappointing, but uh, I'm not too overly perturbed in terms of uh, how the numbers have panned out. I think the commentary will do that too. Yes, sir. We quarter compared to uh, what was estimated, and uh, we need to get further color on uh, the kind of sales uh, volumes. Like Hiral was pointing out, uh, hasn't been that much of an issue as such. But uh, when you look at the EBITDA margins, when you look at the bat numbers as opposed to uh, what was expected out of the second quarter, it hasn't really turned out uh, according to uh, the estimates what uh, the expectations were pegged at. Isn't that correct, uh, Hiral? Right. So Vikram, you know, if you uh, exclude the estimates, if you ignore the estimates, then you cannot say that it is a bad quarter. Right. Only because the expectations were really higher in Ashok Leland, that's the reason why uh, we did see that kind of a reaction. Because overall, if you go to see, uh, the revenues have gone up by around 31% at 6,046 crores, wherein the estimation was that the top line would grow by around 38%. Export volumes have increased by around 39% for Ashok Leland. Uh, the profit number up by around 14% at 330 four crores, wherein we were expecting the profits to jump by around 33%. Uh, so it's 15% below what the street was estimating, but still we've seen a growth number come in there. EBITDA also has come in at 611 crores uh, against a 536 crores. Uh, sales in MHCV segment in the domestic market have seen a growth of 22%. Volumes for LCV have increased by 18%. Uh, so overall, it's not a bad number, you know, to be noted because a margin of around 10.1% is what we've seen versus a 11.9%. So that's where we're the dilemma is because uh, at the margin front we have seen a degrowth that has come in over there. Uh, overall, uh, what the management has also indicated is that it has been a satisfying performance and despite of all the challenges, uh, their market share has remained pretty much uh, robust. <coughs> Apart from that, <coughs> I, uh, excuse me, to support the rapidly growing network of consumers, uh, they have invested in the digital marketplace to enhance their customer efficiency as well. Uh, strong financial performance continues to be robust. Uh, the best part about Ashok Leland's initiative is the strong customer focus. Uh, so that's what they are looking at. But overall, uh, the numbers are not bad if you ignore uh, the estimates completely. It's just that the expectation was really high and uh, that high expectation has not been met so far. All right. Uh, thanks for taking us through all of that, uh, Hiral. Uh, we'll, of course, continue to get some more analysis uh, that there is <coughs> over the numbers that we're seeing out of Ashok Leyland right there. Hiral giving us a sense as to why it has been a weak quarter for Ashok Leyland as well. Let's also put the focus on uh, the big lift, nifty loser that we're looking at, Bharti Airtel, that has been a counter very much in focus. We've seen the stock uh, that is seeing losses of over 4% after witnessing multiple block deals just a bit earlier in the day. Our reports are saying that the Qatar-based Three Pillars has offloaded its entire stake in the company through the block deals. Piyush, of course, is the person who's been tracking this very carefully. Piyush, give us a sense as to what, we're, what we know at this stage and also a little bit about these block deals.
Well, the entire reaction actually is uh, to the news of the block deal happening on the bourses. The expectation, the initial expectation from the markets uh, was actually the block deal could be happening in the range of 473 to 490. What we actually saw the block deal actually happen and, and there were multiple block deals happening uh, between the range of 485 to 505. And again, I would say actually uh, the price, the executed price basically was slightly higher than what the market was estimating, also reflective of the market demand there. So perhaps I think it's good for the stock, but the stock actually has collected or basically it has a retrace primarily only because of the block deal transaction price here in terms of again uh, what could be the deal size here anywhere around 9800 to 10,000 10,200 crores that could be the range uh, in terms of the execution price because execution price points were very different uh, for different block deals now in terms of catalyst again why the stock basically has been seeing a uh, good sort of demand here because of uh, the stake monetization in the Bharti Infratel and then also consolidation of subscribers uh, with respect to the industry consolidation and number three also would be in terms of the expansion opportunities in the broadband network government has been actually looking uh, towards uh, giving large part to private uh, companies including Bharti Airtel uh, for the rural broadband expansion uh, so I think uh, that's what I think is indicated by the stock price Correction today purely because of block deal transaction price uh, and that too I think uh, it's higher than what the market was estimating. Alright, thanks for taking us through all of that. Piyush, uh, giving us a sense as to why we're looking at a drop uh, in the stock uh, up to 6% at one stage and of course 4% as we're looking at. Mahirish, your ideas on this, we were talking about a Bharti Airtel just a few days ago. Uh, uh, many have said that perhaps this is a stock uh, that one can actually look out for uh, at certain levels. What are you making out of the activity we're seeing? And of course Piyush was talking to us about the, uh, the activity we've seen in terms of the uh, Qatar investors pulling out. No, so I think the block deal is something which has impacted the price on the bourses at this point of time and there are uh, certain pros and cons working in favor of the stock at this point of time. To point out the cons, uh, you are probably looking at uh, debt levels increasing to 92,000 odd crores, you are probably looking at ROCs actually coming down to 5.1 percent because of the rising spectrum costs uh, along with the needed OPEX that is required. Uh, the management has stated 25 odd thousand crores uh, to be laid out in terms of capex for f518 uh, the third angle also becomes uh, how the entire leveraging uh, in terms of the balance sheet dynamics and how cash flows will pan out uh, but the pros also are equally important at this point of time the african business has actually held up pretty well if you look at the data consumption uh, for the quarter gone by 784 billion megabytes uh, so that's a huge uh, jump and though you've seen contraction happening in arpus uh, the reported arpus at 145 rupees with Geo actually coming out with a pricing regime, you're probably going to see stability happening on that count. Uh, largely again, I think uh, you are probably seeing uh, some amount of consolidation happening in the industry and that probably augurs well as well. So yes, I think uh, the whole rating probably continues and as Piyush was mentioning, I think uh, the testimony to the fact is the strong underlying demand uh, that uh, this stock probably has within the telecom space. Well, lots of moving uh, pieces within the telecom uh, space, there's no doubt about it, but there are opportunities, uh, which wasn't the case uh, too long ago. Uh, it has uh, really changed in recent times, and uh, the onset of Geo has a uh, lot to do with it, uh, and we'll continue to track that sector. But right now, on a day that uh, we're seeing uh, some kind of uh, subdued trade in the markets, and Nifty trying to f find its feet going between uh, red and green, uh, that's the day that we're concentrating on the pharma sector, because uh, look over there, uh, Nifty Pharma has climbed about a percentage point and within that space we're expecting the result of a pharma major Sipla. It's the top nifty gainer. It's seeing gains of around uh, four percentage points in trade, uh, three and a half at this time and after brokerage houses they've come out uh, with a thumbs up. They've hiked their target prices. Uh, uh, we're going to keenly watch out for Sipla numbers. Uh, they're expected to be strong for the September quarter. Hiral is still with us. Uh, Hiral do tell us now where are expectations uh, placed on Sipla for the second quarter? That's right. So overall, in terms of our brokerages are concerned, the quarter was strong, uh, as we mentioned yesterday as well. Now we have Jefferies, which has increased the target price to a 560 from a 510, and they are expecting margins to remain at current levels in the second half as well. Uh, overall, they retain a hold rating, uh, and they're expecting improvement ahead, but valuation limit is upside. They're expecting a 21% EPS CAGR over FI17 and 20, and this is dependent on the success in terms of U.S. business or uh, where challenges are actually rising. 
Uh, FY 18 to 20 EPS has increased by almost 0 to 7 percent and they're expecting Sipla to report better growth ahead and the risks are high even uh, given the execution track record. You have CLSA as well where they've maintained a buy and they've increased the target price uh, to a 730 from a 655 earlier. Uh, what they are saying is that US sales ramp up that is expected to drive earnings growth ahead. A strong India business US, US ramp up as well as cost control uh, should expand margins as well for a supply over the coming years and they've increased their FI 19 and 20 EPS estimates by 3 uh, to 5 percent. Uh, the cost control is expected to show up further but US sales growth would remain key. And lastly you have a credit suite which has maintained an outperform and what they are saying is that the US upside has started with the Renvela launch. Uh, the cost control also continues and they've increased the target price uh, to a 700 from a 600 earlier. Now Renvela market highlights uh, uh, the concerns about the US market. However, uh, the market has seen higher price erosion at approximately 80 percent and behaving like a six player market despite there being only five players in that category. Uh, now negative surprises here is the launch of the authorized generics as well. And India, if you go to see, has been strong in the second quarter but first half has been weak for Sipla. Now inventory loss of eight to ten days has been seen and they're expecting that to recover uh, to almost four to five days in the second half of FY18. Uh, they do see positive and they have a target price of 700 as we mentioned and they've increased the EPS by 2% in terms of where FY18 is concerned. So overall, yes, brokerages are really bullish on a supply. Well, absolutely. And this is after the numbers have come out. So my bad, uh, really. This happened uh, only when uh, we were doing lunch money uh, yesterday with all the earnings coming in. The mind does get a little fuzzy, but there you have it on Sipla. It's a 4% kind of up move over there. And the entire Pharma pack is participating uh, today in uh, the terms of uh, support that is being lent to the market on a day that uh, the markets aren't uh, really sure where exactly to place itself. Uh, Mayuresh, uh, what do you make of uh, the numbers that have been posted by Sipla? Uh, brokerages more or less are giving it a thumbs up. Uh, how are you looking at this particular counter and which are your favorite picks? Uh, because even yesterday, uh, certain experts on Lupin as well are saying that this is a good opportunity to actually buy because of the kind of US FDA action. It's not going to last very long. It's a very short term thing. So when you look at uh, the kind of plays uh, catering to the US markets within the pharma pack, where do things stack up and which are your top picks here? No, so to a large extent, Vikram, I think the issues uh, have already been highlighted in terms of pricing pressures that a lot of these pharma companies are facing. Secondly, if you look at the FDA concerns, uh, the remedial and remediation costs uh, also eat up uh, because the new product approvals uh, probably take time along with uh, higher cost and higher R&D expenses eat into the margins and that translates onto the bottom line as well. Having said that, I think CIPLA performance was uh, in line with what uh, a lot of analysts on the street had estimated. To a large extent, I think the kind of uh, product approvals that one expects from the US pipeline over the next two years uh, is expected to show a very robust uh, kind of a performance. Uh, the India businesses held up pretty well. But the two main things I'll watch out for over the next few quarters will be the formulations launch, uh, specifically the inhaler launch in the UK market close to 450, 460 odd million dollars uh, and what it probably does with its approval pipeline, uh, how much approvals actually start coming through over the next uh, few uh, quarters. Uh, having said that, I think the medical operations have stabilized uh, for a supply on a consolidated basis. I think the earnings uptick of 3 to 5 percent over the next uh, two years from a 19 perspective not ruled out. So yes, I think uh, a hold rating probably continues on Sibla. Lupin is something that we liked, but uh, with the disastrous news that probably came in yesterday, we've obviously cut down on our earnings estimates. Uh, largely, again, if you look at the kind of pipeline and the new product approval delays that can come through, that eats into its earnings estimates, not just for 19, but tad bit into first half of FI20 as well. Uh, with, with higher remediation cost, as I mentioned earlier, I think Lupin might have to face even higher costs. Uh, so FI18 expected to be muted, FI19 because of uh, slower new product approvals uh, will eat into earnings and that probably means uh, that uh, the stock probably is stuck in a range at least for the next uh, one to two quarters. Uh, do valuations look attractive for Lupin? Absolutely yes. Uh, so though the target prices probably get reduced, uh, my own sense is that this is one stock which will consolidate but the next few quarters is somewhere I think uh, the accumulative opportunity still exists. Uh, but largely again I think this is our stocks only for long term investors. I think uh, a medium term outlook for these stocks might actually give you returns which are lesser than what the market might deliver.
Okay, fair point there. And interesting what you're saying about the valuations being uh, uh, being uh, interesting, but at the same time, of course, one has to look at the kind of values we're putting onto the target price there. Hold on a minute, Mayuresh, because I want to just move away from pharma for for now and talk about the sugar stocks because we've seen they've been quite under the spotlight and are seeing pretty strong gains in trade. Let's get into what is really uh, sweetening the whole uh, sugar lot. Piyush, of course, is here to give us the latest when it comes to the buzz uh, for the sugar space, including, of course, the earnings that we've seen for sugar. Over to you. For sugar, again, uh, the first point would be uh, the movement of the international sugar prices. Those actually have been trending higher. Uh, over the last uh, almost two to three years, we have seen high correlation between the crude prices and sugar prices. And that actually comes to the Brazilian basin there. Because the crude prices, they actually move up. The ethanol actually becomes more attractive. And that increases the demand for sugar. And that's why the sugar prices, they go up. Domestically, that's actually positive sentiment news in terms of the sugar price uptick here. But then actually the question is more about uh, two points more here number one the results from the sugar companies like DCM Shriram, Dampo Sugar, those actually were very good. Margin increase, uh, good sort of a profit increase. So again, that is a good sentiment rub off. And number two, the most important here is, uh, is the advancement of the crushing season versus the last year. This time, crushing season actually has started much earlier. And you are talking about some numbers here. In, the, in this new season, 60 minutes again, they've already started the crushing season versus 10 only last time. And similarly, the production again basically is looking uh, much more advanced in terms of production actually has increased and is actually uh, much higher versus the last year at this point of time. So all that basically is also implies that perhaps uh, we could be seeing much higher volume, sales volumes much earlier this time. So perhaps the third and fourth quarter actually are going to show you uh, much earlier sales numbers versus the last year. And I think that's why uh, the sugar stocks basically are getting excited. All work, all good. Uh, thanks for taking us through all of that. Piyush Mahirish, just want to come to you. Uh, we were, of course, getting a good sense of which uh, companies to track. But how would you sort of look at this sector? And, of course, there are certain companies, we were sort of named uh, uh, some of them for you right there, that seem to be uh, better poised than others. Any recommendations you have uh, when it comes to really looking at companies that could be looking at those sweet gains? So, apart from all the factors that Piyush mentioned, uh, obviously the FRP and the SAP prices is something to be closely monitored for. Uh, and with increase in prices, what you're obviously going to see in this sugar season or the crushing season is that production numbers compared on a year-on-year -year basis will drastically go up. Uh, though the carryover inventory will be far lesser than what we saw for the carryover inventory for the last sugar season, you're probably going to see more uh, in, in terms of produce coming into the market, demand probably will uh, sustain around a 24 and a half, 25 odd million tons. Uh, and again, I think the government is very, very cognizant of the fact uh, that higher sugar prices probably eats into a lot of inflation because sugar is a widely consumed commodity, whether in urban or rural areas. Having said that, uh, the next uh, two quarters, I think the numbers still will be relatively better for the sugar companies uh, uh, as the crushing increases and as the yield rate uh, probably improves further. Uh, my own sense is that uh, the kind of reported numbers, at least from a margin and a bottom line perspective, should be relatively better. Uh, so largely, again, I think I'm very, very selective at this space. Uh, but again, I think uh, one really needs to watch out uh, both in terms of government policies as well as the production estimates and that will actually get released over the next few quarters. My own sense is that the production numbers will be higher, which will put a cap to sugar prices uh, and the runaway rally that you've probably seen in the last uh, sugar season. All right, Marish, thanks a lot for taking us through all of that. Uh, pleasure as always having you right here on BTVI. That is it on this edition of Lunch Money. It's been a